Um, I want to welcome you all to the library, the Learning Commons today, to hear a reading from the book, When We Met the Water, which was written by some of your classmates here at the high school and some of your brothers and sisters, for those of you from the middle school. Um, the students were our ELL students, English language learners, and some students, mainstream students from the high school who have put this book together, and they're going to share some of their stories. And I know you're going to be the best possible audience they could ask for. Um, and some people are going to speak quietly, so we have a microphone to help. And we welcome your patience and your understanding. So um, a couple of the kids are going to start. Um, yeah. Let's have a big round of applause, because there's a lot of you here. So I'll go without the mic. So, All right. my name's Laura Mills, and I'm a senior here at South Portland. And my story is called Like a Magnifying Glass. And sorry if my voice shakes. I'm not like emotional. I just like I'm a little bit nervous. But um, okay. So, my parents have been to Mexico before, and they told me about the snow caves. They told me they were fresh water and kind of like ponds, but more like quarries. They told me about the rocks at the bottom that were like that the water was like a magnifying glass too. When we finally made our first trip to Mexico as a family, all I wanted to do was go to the snow tank. My parents' descriptions had painted pictures in my mind, and I wanted to experience it for myself. I saw a sign for Snow Tea Azul on the way to the village we were staying in. I made my mom promise she was going to take me there, and she did. I remember that all the locals were there, and they were extremely welcoming. They all had sun-kissed, warm-toned skin and dark black hair. Being the blonde-haired, blue-eyed American girl that I am, I stuck out like a sore thumb. There were a bunch of families and teenagers. It reminded me of the beaches back home. There was some kind of a wooden dock in the snote, and it was disheveled and falling down. That didn't matter, though. It added to the feel of the snote. It made it relatable, unlike the cold stone pools that were almost too perfect back in our condo. The snote was inviting you in. The water was crystal clear and looked shallow, but was incredibly deep. The water was like a magnifying glass everywhere. The algae on the rocks was green and looked like it was right there, and that I could touch it. It was actually so deep down, I couldn't even swim to it. The snow tea was surrounded by a cave parallel to the falling down dock. It was about 12 feet tall, and there was a path leading to it. I saw the local teenagers jumping off of the cave into the water, and I wanted to do it too. The ambitious side of me had come out, and for some reason, I thought right then it was a good time to jump for my fear of heights. Some of the teenagers could do amazing flips, and I was in awe. I followed the path to the cave, the pit of my stomach turning into a million knots surrounded by butterflies. On my way up to the top, an iguana ran across my path, like some kind of unexpected encouragement and hello. His scales were teal and faded, like they were, painting, they were painted on. And I think I scared him away, So as he scurried back into the forest, and I continued climbing. I reached the top, and everyone looked so little. My mom was cheering me on, and so were the locals. I captured to three and jumped. My feet left the ground, and I plunged into the water. The drop felt like forever. Even with the impact of the water, I didn't touch the bottom. The crystal clear water was even deeper than I expected. After I came up, I floated on my back, looking up into the trees and vines that were surrounding the snow tank. I could see little parts of the hot Mayan sun peeking through the leaves. The water was cool and refreshing, and I had just floated there for a while, enjoying the view, the sensations in the water. Little kids' voices, little kids voices in Spanish words were floating throughout the air. I could pick up a few words, but it was just so nice to hear everyone's voices. Not only did I love the water, but the locals at the snow day thought it was so courageous that I jumped. I remember them calling me the brave American girl. Their encouragement made me want to jump again. I climbed up the path once again for my second jump. I was ready to make the leap into the water when I had slipped. The ground had gotten muddy from everyone's wet feet walking in the same spot, and I fell into the water. I fell the full 12 feet, and I had no control. I felt like I was falling forever, <coughs> and then I was greeted by a huge smack. When my body met the water I had previously fallen in love with, the wind was knocked out of me. I couldn't breathe, and I wasn't drowning, but it was hard to move. My mom wasn't in the water with me, and I couldn't call for her help. Suddenly, a warm, dark arm grabbed me, grabbed mine, and led me out of the water onto a rock. My mom came over and made sure I was okay. I was fine, just shaken up. The man who helped me out of the water made sure I was okay before he went back to his family. I let myself recover and just took into the view. The families were playing and enjoying themselves. My mom was sitting next to me reading a book. It was so serene. Once I felt my breath return, I decided to go for one last jump. I climbed the same path I had previously traveled and was ready to take my final jump before I went to leave. I was a bit scared, but not as much as before. 
I knew the pain that the water could cause, but I also knew the serenity it had previously provided. I was ready for my last jump as I looked over the edge. I noticed that everyone had turned around and was cheering me on. I immediately started to smile and stepped back. I grabbed, the, I grabbed some courage from somewhere inside of me and started to run. The girl who used to be scared of heights did a running jump off a 12-foot cave. I was so surprised at myself. Warm air was all around me as I descended from the cave and plunged into the refreshing and crisp, and crisp water. I came back up and still had that same smile on my face. I had conquered my fear of heights, something that had hindered me from all the tall roller coasters and Ferris wheels. I had finally done it. I got out of the water and went back to my mom on the rock. It was getting late and it was time to head back to our little condo. We said goodbye to the locals who we, who we had befriended and made the drive down the highway back to our little village. I love that snow day. It was the highlight of my trip that year. In my most recent trip back to the Maya Riviera, I got to visit Snow Tea Azul again, and this time I was much older. The cave didn't seem so tall and the drop not so far. It made me realize that when we are little, things seem scarier than they actually are. Things don't seem so big and the world doesn't seem so vast. I jumped from the top of the cave once again, though, and the same feeling of butterflies entered my stomach. The memories floated back. The same feelings filled my body and memories filled my head. I felt at home in a foreign country, something I would have never expected. I'm a senior here at Oak Point High School, and yeah, my story's called Endlessly Afloat. Do I have to stay in my story? A wave crashed over me. Um, it wasn't a metaphorical wave, but a full-blown, strong, salty ocean wave. I was swimming in the Mediterranean Sea in Cinque Terre, which is a cluster of five tiny Italian villages. The water was sparkling blue, the shiniest, most magical blue I've ever seen. The sun was beaming down, reflecting off the water so brilliantly that my cheap Malbot sunglasses were a necessity. They stayed resting over my eyes the whole day, whether I was in or out of the water, in order to pre prevent pesky wrinkles from appearing around my eyes when I'm older. I was so perfectly content soaking up the sun floating in the water, that is, until a wave took me down with it. We've all been there, those five fear-filled seconds when the ocean is pushing you down, refusing to let you come back up for air. I won the fight with the water and found my head bobbing above the water once again. I couldn't help but smile and laugh. I was so lucky, lucky to splash around in the most beautiful ocean and to have the sun kissing every inch of my body. I only had that one day to be free by the ocean as my mom and I were traveling to Venice the next day. So naturally, I spent the whole day alternating between sunbathing and body surfing. The people watching was phenomenal. Not to mention that my aviator shades made it super easy to stare, maybe a little bit too long, at everybody around me. There were people from all walks of life. There were tourists like us, natives, couples, families, and people just lounging by themselves. The beach wasn't, wasn't one of those that was filled with soft sand like the coastal main beaches I was used to. Instead, the people were like seals draped across the large rocks, taking in the scene and playing by the ocean waves. After lying in the sun for about 45 minutes, I felt crispy fried, like a burnt potato chip. I got up from my rock and ran right into that cool, refreshing sky blue water. I let my body float and ride the waves. My peace was rudely disrupted by yet another crashing wave. This wave took me right down. My body thrashed against the ocean floor and I struggled to find my way back to the top, wrestling with the riptide. After what seemed like a long, exhausting fight, I wriggled my way back up to oxygen. I bobbed for a while to bring, my, to bring my breathing back to normal. I couldn't help but laugh at myself again. I kept coming back and playing in the ocean even though it took me down every time. However, after a couple of moments, I felt as though something was missing. Then it dawned on me, my sunglasses. The sunglasses that have been protecting my eyes from those powerful Italian ultraviolet rays had lost the fight with the wave. I scanned the ocean around me but gave up quickly. Those sunglasses represented a part of me, and now a part of me would be floating in that ocean forever. It's been two years since the trip, but I still find my thoughts shifting back to those sunglasses and where they might be now. Are they still in the Mediterranean? Did they swim on over to the Black Sea? There's no way for me ever to find out, but yet I'm at peace with that fact. 
My hope is that one day I can be like those sunglasses, aimlessly swimming through life, traveling from place to place. I want to see the different oceans and broaden my horizons. I want to immerse myself in unfamiliar cultures and have exciting new experiences. At the end of the day, the $10 that I spent on those cheap aviators didn't matter. I could always just buy myself a new identical pair. So I walked away from the waves feeling surprisingly satisfied. If I personally could have float around in the Mediterranean for the rest of my life, at least my sunglasses, a little part of me could. Because it makes me relax and thinking about my, my life. I think about my past, my future, and what I am doing now. When I was nine years old, I would play with my friends in the rain in Baghdad. We would land in, in the bottle with your bare feet. Um, we felt so free, and it was so fun. When I was 13 years old, I went to, to play in the rain, but we couldn't or the country become dangerous. It was raining, but us and stand of water. This made me sad because I love to go outside. When I came to America, I could walk in the rain again, close my eye and walk a long way. This, is, this has given me hope and feeling of love and smile. All my family is in America now. I live in South Poland, Land, Maine, with my sister and nephew and my mom. But my dad is still in Iraq because he has another family there. Um, luckily, my mom is always with me. When my mom is with me, I don't feel his absence so much. She always cares about me and wants me to be a great with everything. When she sees me happy, she's feeling happy too. I always think about her when she feels good. I feel good. She always tells me the truth. She's everything in my life. I can't live without my mom. I love her so much. Now I feel I can't think about the future. I like fashion makeup and I like to travel. I like to go outside and not be at home all the time. In the future, I want to be a pharmacist because I want to help people. This is what my dad wanted, want to see me become. Sometimes I talk to him on Skype and um, when I talk to him, I feel so good. I always tell him about the, my grade and he, he's glad because that I am doing um, well in my school. I am ambitious. I want to do many things in my life. Now that I am in America, I love going to the cinema and watching movie, realistic, romantic comedies. When I watch sad movie, sometimes I, I cry and I eat so much. When I watch them, I don't, when I watch them, I don't feel, I, I don't feel, I mean, I don't like scary movies because I don't like feeling scared. But I still walk in the rain and that feel hopeful about my future. I have friends whose name is Paul. 
He doesn't like to get on board. He said, oh. it's bad luck for me. When I was in Thailand, I used to walk up at 5 p.m. and take the bus to school. But I usually woke up late. If I woke up late, I would go to school by the third boat or river. I have a friend whose name is Boat. He doesn't like to get on board, he said. It's a bad luck for me. If I get on board, I can die. In my culture, it's bad luck for people born on certain days to get on board. Maybe his parents named him board to remind him that he should never get on board. My grandmother told me about my bad luck. I was born on Saturday. She told me that if people get a haircut on the day they were born, it's unlucky. So if I get a haircut on Saturday, it's bad luck for me. Maybe my name should, should be Saturday. <laughs> this is Amino Mao, and she wrote a story called The Memory of Rain. I'm going to read the first part, and she's going to read a paragraph on her own as well. On page 9. When I lived in Somalia, sometime when I wasn't at Duxi, which is the school, the rain came down and we took a shower outside and splashed in the puddles. It was warm and the rain was salty. It came down in sprinkles. It felt fun and good. I would play in the rain with my brothers, sisters, and cousins. We would splash each other. The rain made the ground wet. I would not wear shoes, only shorts. I was only seven years old. My sister was ten years old. My brother was twelve and my younger brother was six. The rain made the soil wet, and we built mud houses. We put our legs in the soil and put the mud on top of our feet. Then we would pull out our feet, and we would have a house. The soil in Somalia was soft and white. It smelled good, like fresh soil. The houses would last about 30 minutes, and then we would knock them down. Thank you. 
Antonio Santos Palma. When I was growing up in Santa Cruz de Joya, Honduras, there was a lot to learn. I lived with my grandfather, Augustine. He taught me what I needed to know. To, be, to tell you about him is to speak of someone central to my whole being. <coughs> Excuse me. We were always together. We would walk around, along the Ulu River, where he taught me to swim and how to catch fish. He told me about my culture. He said that the Maya existed thousands of years before Christ. They said the earth was a layer of dirt over a crocodile's back. He told me the stories. He showed me how to speak my native Maya language, Kitchen. It was very complicated to learn, but he showed me the symbols, and we practiced together. My grandfather was very proud of me. He was my greatest teacher and friend. I'll never forget so many memories of life with my grandfather. She lives in Bridgeton, Maine, which is only an hour and 15 minutes from my house in South Portland. I love visiting with her, especially in the summer, because it's always warm and she lives right beside a lake. She also owns a boat because she lives so close. I attend to visit her frequently with my family and sometimes my friends. After a long and stressful year, having the opportunity to get away from everything is always exciting. Finally completing my junior year of every, uh, Finally completing my junior year of high school, I wanted nothing more than to be able to take a load off <laughs> during the summer, and the best place to go is my grandmother's house. My grandmother lives just off Route 302 on a dirt road that leads to Highland Lake. The lake is very warm during the summer, and the fishing is great all year long. She owns a pontoon boat too, which can comfortably seat a large crowd <coughs> of guests. I love taking the boat out onto the lake because the view is fascinating. The White Mountains run right through Highland Lake and provide us a very scenic background. There are also all kinds of diverse trees hugging the banks of the lake. Waking up before the sunrise and getting on the lake before the breeze starts to pick up is one of my favorite things to do. The water creates a perfect mirror image of the tall trees that rest beside the lake. The water reflects the light emitted from the sunrise too. I usually only wake up early enough to catch the these sites when I go fishing. The fishing is great on Highland. The lake is stocked with brown trout and a variety of bass and lots of smaller fish. There are lots of mountains to climb in the area too. The best local mountain to climb is Shawnee Peak because the view is impeccable. There are trails, all of which have different levels of difficulty. On some days you can see the distinct locations where the light is shielded from lighting up the ground below because of the clouds that hover above. You can also see all the lakes and ponds below, towered by other mountains. 
My grandmother lives in a very primitive location, and there's always something to do to stay entertained. Getting to visit her as much as I do is very gratifying and relieves, relieves a lot of stress that I have in my life. In the summer, I get to go swimming and fishing, and in the winter, I get to relax on the couch and watch football while drinking hot chocolate. I really love my grandmother's house because every season brings different forms of entertainment, and there's always something to do. students be available. There's food here. Middle school students, if you have a book, they, they can autograph it for you, their story. Um, and everyone else, I just hope you'll come up and talk to the students. We'll be around. We can eat some food and just hang out for a little bit and uh, congratulate them more one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you guys very much for coming.